Hey, welcome to Electron Online, and here we have a different kind of example of the same thing again, a rolling object. In this case, the rolling object is coming down an incline, and the question is, will this rolling object, this wheel, this what we call a solid cylinder, will it slip, or will it roll down the incline? And that, of course, has a lot to do with the coefficient of friction between the wheel and the surface, how steep the, the, the uh, incline is, and whether or not the torque caused by the friction between the wheel and the incline, is it sufficient to keep up with the acceleration down the incline? All right, so let's see how we would do something like this, how we'd figure that out. Well, first of all, let's draw all the vectors of all the forces acting on the wheel. We have the, uh, uh, we have the mg coming down, so let's go like this. So we have the mg, the weight of the wheel caused by gravity, and of course we can divide that into its vertical and or perpendicular and the parallel components. So the perpendicular component right here would be mg cosine of theta. Uh, this angle right here, theta, is the same angle as this angle right there. And again, the way we can tell that is that this line right here is perpendicular to this line, and this line here is perpendicular to this line, so therefore the angle between those two lines must equal the angle between those two lines, so therefore that is theta. And since that's the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, we can say that's mg cosine theta, and this would then be mg sine theta, mg times the sine of theta. Now the mg sine theta, that's the force that is pulling the wheel down the incline, and then we have mg cosine theta, which is pushing the wheel against the incline, and that of course causes the friction force. Remember, if there's no friction between the wheel and the surface here, the incline, then the wheel would simply slide down the surface and it would not rotate. If there is a friction there between the wheel and the surface, which there must be because the coefficient of friction is 0.4, then the wheel will actually rotate like this, which means there's a friction force in this direction. And the friction force can be defined as the normal force times mu, and of course the normal force, which is the force of the incline pushing back against the wheel, which must be equal to the mg cosine theta, so normal force equals mg cosine theta, which means the friction force must therefore be equal to mg cosine theta times mu, and that's the friction force pushing upward. All right, now that we have that, we now need two equations. The first equation we need is F equals ma, because that will govern or determine the acceleration of the rolling wheel, the rolling cylinder coming down the incline, and we also need the equation torque equals I times alpha because that will govern the torque causing the wheel to rotate. And the way we can look at it is if the torque is sufficient to make the wheel rotate fast enough or accelerate fast enough so that it can keep up with the translational motion, the wheel will not slip. But if the torque is not sufficiently large to cause the angle acceleration to be uh, large enough to keep up to the translation acceleration, then the wheel will slip. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to find what the maximum acceleration is that this torque can provide for the angular acceleration and compare that then to what the force then needs to be to push the wheel downward. Of course, you need to have a maximum force there. If the force is any greater than that, then the wheel will accelerate too fast and the torque cannot keep up. So watch and see how we do that. Well, remember that torque equals I alpha is the rotational equivalent of Newton's second law, F equals ma. Instead of F, we use torque. Instead of mass, we use the moment of inertia. Instead of linear acceleration, we use angular acceleration. Remember the equation for torque is equal to the force times the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation to the line of action of the force. That would be the radius of the wheel. And so therefore, we can say that would be the force friction times the radius, that's the torque provided to make the wheel rotate, and that's equal to the moment of inertia of a solid disk, that would be one half mr squared, and alpha, the angular acceleration, can be found by saying that the linear acceleration is equal to r times alpha, therefore alpha is equal to a divided by r, and we can write that instead of alpha, we can write a divided by r, and then notice that this r cancels out that r, and this r cancels out that r, so we can say that the friction force we can say the maximum friction force that can be provided by, um, by the friction between the wheel and the uh, incline is equal to one half mass times acceleration, which then becomes the maximum acceleration that the torque can provide. All right, now we go back to F equals ma, and the force that will pull the, the, 
the wheel downward would be mg sine theta, that would be mg sine theta, minus the friction force, which would then of course push in the opposite direction, and that equals mass times acceleration. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the maximum force. So this is the maximum force that we, this can be, so I'm going to call this F max. So this is F max. Well, no, I can't call that F max because that's going to be the difference between the maximum force caused by mg sine theta and the friction force right there. <clears throat> so let me write it then. F max, the, the greatest that this force can be, minus the friction force is equal to m times a. And remember that the friction force is one half ma. The friction force can also be written as mg cosine theta times mu. It doesn't matter which one you use for friction force. You can use this or you can use that. This looks easier, so let me use that. And if you're not sure if you can use this as well, after I finish it up, you can go ahead and try to plug that in. And you'll get exactly the same value. It works either way. So maximum force, uh, F max, <coughs> excuse me, minus the friction force would be, would be one half ma, and that is the maximum friction force that the torque can provide. So that would be the maximum acceleration equals m times a, and so therefore F max is equal to when we bring this to the other side, that becomes a plus one half ma, plus a whole ma, that would be three halves ma, and so that would be equal to, hmm, actually what I need to do here, in order for me to find that, I need to find what the maximum acceleration is, that can be divided by this maximum force. So what I need to do actually here, is I need to solve for maximum acceleration. So I can say a max is equal to two times the maximum friction force, divided by the mass. So put the two over here, take the m, divide uh, the other side, and so we get two times the maximum friction force, which would be mg cosine theta times mu, divided by the mass. The masses cancel out, so this is equal to two times g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times the cosine of 45 degrees, times 0 0.4, and so the maximum force that can be supported by that torque is, let me use my calculator, so 2 times 9.8 times the cosine of 45 degrees times 0.4 equals, and it's 5.54 meters per second squared. So 5.54 meters per second squared. So now that we have that, we can plug that into my maximum acceleration there to find the maximum force by which I can pull down on the wheel to keep it from slipping, so that would be 3 halves times the mass times 5.54, and so it would be times 4 times 3 divided by 2 equals, and it's 33.3 newtons. All right, if I pull on this wheel with a force greater than 33.3 newtons, the force will be too large for the torque to keep up and the wheel will begin to slip. Now. How big is this force? Is this force greater than the maximum force allowed or less than the maximum force allowed? If it's less, the wheel will not slip. If it's larger, then the wheel will slip. So, let's find out. mg sine theta is equal to question mark. So, mg sine theta is equal to the mass times g, which is 9.8, times the sine of 45 degrees, and let's see what we get here. 4 times 9.8 times 45 sine equals, and it's 27.7 newtons. That would be the force caused by mg sine theta. Since that force is smaller than this force, we can conclude the wheel will not slip. The answer, therefore, is no. The wheel will not slip because mg sine theta, the force causing the acceleration, will be smaller than the maximum force that can be applied before the wheel begins to slip. And so the answer is the wheel will not slip. All right, so that's our example for an inclined plane like that, have a rolling object on the inclined plane. On the next example, we're going to calculate what the actual acceleration will be. It's a little bit more difficult, so if you, need to, if you want to find out how to calculate that, Stay tuned for the next video and we'll show you how to actually find the acceleration in a case like this.